Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to talk about HP Z840 Workstation and specifically we're going to go over the memory and CPUs inside. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP Z840 Workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Let's start with the uh, CPUs. There are two CPUs inside. It is an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it uses Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 or V4 series processors. People ask us all the time, hey, what procs do you recommend? Really, it depends on uh, what you are using this for. If you're just using this as a, uh, you know, an everyday desktop at your house, um, then realistically, you can get away with uh, something on the low end that's like uh, E5 2620V3. Uh, if you put in two. Uh, two of those in your machine, those are hex cores, you can get 12 cores out of it, and that is, uh, I mean, realistically, you can get them for under 20 bucks each, so it's a, a relatively uh, a cheap upgrade. Um, if you want something more on the value side, I'm a big fan of the E5 2660V3, the E5 2670V3, that's a really good bang for your buck right there. If you want something on the high end side, because maybe you're using this for gaming or this is your office server, um, I recommend something like uh, E5 2660 V4, E5-2695 V4, E5-2697, 98, 99 V4, all those are really great options on the high end side. Um, and really there's, uh, there's just so many options on this as a whole, really you can't go wrong. Um, on the, uh, the memory side, it takes DDR4 memory. There are 16 DIMM slots inside. You can use a number of different speeds. You can use 2133, 2400, or 2666. I will note, however, 2666 will actually clock back down to 2400, which is the true fastest uh, speed for the Z840 workstation. As far as the different DIMM sizes, you can use a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, or all the way up to a 64 gig, or actually all the way up to 128 gig gig, but there's a catch there. For the 64 gig and the 128 gig, you can only use them with one type of RAM. And that brings us to, what type of RAM does my Z840 support? Well, there's two types. You can use ECC registered, known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced memory, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 512 gigabytes using 1632 gigs at 2400 speed. With LRDIMs, however, you can get four times the scalability and you can max out at two terabytes using 24, 128 gigs at 2400 speed. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the specs, why don't we go ahead and open this up. Uh, we'll go ahead and install the RAM. We'll show you which slots you want to actually put them in to maximize your performance if you're not uh, completely maxing it out, because not everyone needs to max it out. So if you're wondering at home, like, hey, I'm only putting in you know, 64 gigs or 96 gigs or 128 gigs total, um, where do I put them and how do I install them? Well, that's what we'll show you. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. You never really want to be in, inside your machine without some sort of protection. And I get that a lot of people use this at home as the desktop, so you might not have the SD gear. So one thing that I recommend is uh, don't uh, work on it on carpet. Um, if you can take it and put it on a desk or a table, um, touch some metal right beforehand, some copper to help dissipate the ESD on your hand, all those will be just little things that you can do to help kind of protect your machine. But I'm going to grab my gear and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine. So this is pretty simple. You're just going to pop the latch right here and lift the top up pretty much like any uh, desktop or workstation you've been before. And you know, one thing I did want to uh, note, I actually meant to start with this because uh, I, I think for some users who are at home using this as a desktop, uh, sometimes they find it confusing when they see that uh, when they go to upgrade the RAM, it's server RAM. That's just because you have a really awesome desktop. So this uh, this is a workstation, and so while yes, it isn't a desktop form factor, the the CPUs and the RAM that you're using are server CPUs and RAM. So uh, they're just at a higher level than your normal consumer desktop, uh, which again is what makes this you know such a beefy machine and so awesome. But I did want to point that out because if you're at home and you're sitting here going, you know, I'm I'm using a desktop, I don't understand why they're talking about server RAM. That's that is why. <laughs> so uh, just wanted to clarify that before we got too much further. So all right, well now let's go ahead and install our upgrade with our server RAM. So uh, first things first, it's it's kind of similar to the Z820 if you've been inside the Z820 before. So you're going to want to start over here. Um, you're going to want to pinch this and lift up. 
and I'll note that there's these two rivets over here that um, these kind of hook into or these two little openings. So you just need to make sure you don't accidentally bend the metal and you can toss this to the side and now you have access. Uh, so if you were installing anything into the PCIe slots, you know, graphic card or anything like this, uh, you'll, you know, you have access over here. But to get to the CPUs into the RAM, you are going to need to remove this uh, air shroud. And now the difference between the Z820 and the Z840 here is that uh, there used to be just a plastic piece on top that you removed and then there was the air shroud that you would remove. This is all one piece together. And it's honestly, it's a little bit difficult to, to get out. So I could see some people at home who might you know, struggle with it and think they're accidentally gonna break it because you know you wanna just be able to kind of go like this and it kind of gets stuck, right? Um, so what we do is we, we make sure that this pops open and this kind of gets loosened. And really I come over here and you have to be careful because there are, this is connected uh, to the motherboard so you really need to make sure you're lifting it straight up so if you come over here and you grab this fan uh, you're gonna have to you know use some force but then you can pull it straight up uh, that's the way that I recommend doing it because um, if you're pulling the two green pieces uh, for whatever reason it feels like on the back and you're gonna break it so and this is the connector uh, that I'm talking about that is actually uh, in the uh, the motherboard and powers all these fans here to keep everything cool okay so we'll go ahead and set this to the side so as we discussed, there's two CPUs, uh, CPU 0 and CPU 1. CPU 0 has the eight DIMM slots over here, and CPU 1 has the eight DIMM slots over here. You'll notice that they're color-coded black and white. Uh, black is actually the start of the memory channel, and white is the second DIMM slot. Uh, for a lot of systems, especially on the Dell side, white is the start of the channel. So I did want to note that black is the start of the channel. So if you were installing this with one CPU or two CPU, is will kind of depend on how you actually want to configure it. So let's start with if you're only using one CPU, okay? You would want to, this would be considered DIMM slot one, and that would be where you'd put your first DIMM. Then you come over here, and this is number two. And you come back in here, and this is number three. And then you come back over here, and this is number four. So again, if you were only putting, uh, only using one CPU, you would want to use one, two, three, four, all the black slots. Okay. Now, if you were using two CPUs, it's a little bit different. So uh, follow me here because it gets a, a little trickier, not too bad. So this is uh, DIM slot one. And now you're going to come over here, and this would actually be the second slot you put them in, okay? And then you're going to come over here, and this will be the third, and this would be the fourth. So if you're only installing four DIMMs into this with two CPUs, you'd want to use basically the four outside uh, black slots. That's what you want to use, okay? Now, um, if we were continuing to roll four, then this would be number five. This would be uh, number six. Come back over here, and this is number seven, and this is number eight. So if you were putting eight in, you would want to uh, do the eight black DIMM slots, okay? That would be the, the proper way to do it with two CPUs. Now, of course, I always tell people I like to max it out because I like to get the most out of it, but I also understand not every, every application calls for that or needs that, um, so not everyone needs that to max it out. So this might be the perfect setup for if you're at home and you're like, hey, I want to put in Eight eight gigs or eight sixteen gigs, you want it with two CPUs. Of course, you want to put them in the eight black slots. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and actually do the uh, the physical install. But one of the uh, suggestions I wanted to tell people in advance, I like to pop open all my DIMM slots. Okay, I know it's a, a simple easy thing, and you don't have to do this, but it's one of those things I like to do things that just prevent issues from happening and really the goal is just to protect the parts and get the machine back in a working state and actually uh, in a better state because now we've done an upgrade right so to me just doing little things to make sure that we do not accidentally damage a, a dim slot or damage a dim i'll take the extra few seconds so anyhow all right the next thing i recommend you'll notice right here on the module there is a notch this notch right here is known as a key this key is not perfectly centered, which means you have to make sure you line your module up perfectly, or you could accidentally damage the, the lead on the module, or you could accidentally damage the dim slot, okay? So we're gonna do this first one, and it's gonna go like this. So we've got it lined up properly. We're gonna slide it in. So you'll, you'll notice I've put it in. However, it is not fully inserted. You wanna hear these two clicks? 
those two clicks let you know uh, that the tab right here has now clicked to the side of the module and latched it down and put it in so that the leads are fully inserted. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do the next one, and it's going to be the same thing, line it up properly. And one of the things I always tell people is, you know, making sure that it's seated properly is a, a non, honestly a really common error. Uh, I don't care if you've been a technician 20 years or you're, you know, this is your first time ever doing an upgrade at home. Which if this is your first time doing an upgrade at home um, and you're a little bit worried, don't don't worry. This is actually a very very easy upgrade. Uh, anybody can do it. So um, you know, don't don't worry if you're at home thinking, man, this might be too complicated. Really, it's not. You're just putting you know dims into the right slots, and uh, a video like this will make it really easy for you to do. But anyhow, one of the things I always say, if you've been doing it 20 years, you can easily make the same mistake by just going really fast. And all of a sudden, normally it'll be something like this, where it's just a little bit out, and it might be hard to see on camera, but it's just a little bit out, and it's not fully seated, and that's what when it happens. So now I'm going to keep on rolling, uh, but I'm going to fast forward so that we don't waste any time and we'll be right back. All right, so now we have dropped in 1632 gigs. Uh, this is going to be a great upgrade and really going to over uh, increase the speed overall. And that's one of the things I always tell people if you're looking to if your goal is to make your machine faster, uh, a lot of people think, oh, I need to upgrade my CPUs. And yes, don't get me wrong, upgrading your CPUs is uh, a great option and it'll help uh, increase the overall speed. But what I actually recommend is uh, because the CPUs are so far ahead of everything else in the machine, I actually uh, recommend upgrading the RAM and upgrading your machine to an SSD if you're running on a spinning disk hard drive. To me, those are the two uh, easiest things to do that'll actually make your machine uh, noticeably faster. To me, memory is uh, you know, the main thing, and I always tell people that. So if you're looking to upgrade your Z840, do us a favor. Uh, we have all the different flavors uh, of memory, different speeds, different sizes, all in stock. I uh, would love to help you guys out email us at sales at cloudninjas.com, that's sales at cloudninjas.com, or even if you just want to custom build one, we'll actually, uh, we actually custom build systems as well, and we would love to help you custom build your machine, so email us at sales at cloudninjas.com, and we can get back to you with a, a great quote and in a quick time. So, all right, let's put this bad boy back together. So, uh, first things first, we're going to put the air baffle back on, okay? So, as we discussed, there is this connector, which is over here, so you just want to make sure that you line this up properly. And I'll also note that you'll see this uh, plastic ridge right there is where you kind of push it against and line it up. And I do it all pretty slow because I'm always nervous about potentially damaging anything in the machine. So I like to just kind of go down nice, slow and ginger. And then once I get here, I'll push down just to make sure that it's fully connected and it's completely flush. Okay, so now we're all good here. Now we had discussed there's these two metal pieces, so you're going to want to kind of hook these in to start. So you're going to come in, you're going to hook them in, you're going to pinch this down, and boom, you're done. Put the top on and you call it a day. Well, hey, if you made it this far, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks, guys. Take care.